If you're new to GarageBand on Mac, all of the controls, buttons, knobs and options can be a wee bit overwhelming. So in this video, I'm going to share some tips that'll help you get going. By default, GarageBand opens the last project you were working on, but the very first time you open the program, you'll be taken to the project select screen. You have multiple options to choose from from the list on the left. Selecting new project will do just that. Open a brand new, fresh GarageBand project. You can open any recent projects you may have been working on with the recent tab. You can launch completely free guitar, piano or artist lessons that you've downloaded from the Learn to Play tab, and you can download more from the Lesson Store tab. The Project Templates tab allows you to select from six ready-made project templates. The open garage band with certain instruments or features already selected. My advice is to stick with the new project tab and the empty project option. This opens a fresh garage band project from scratch, and for me anyway, is the best way to begin. Once you open a brand new GarageBand project, you'll be prompted to select a track type. If you plan to record GarageBand's built-in MIDI sounds with one of these, or the musical typing function, that's the on-screen keyboard you can play with your typing keyboard, open a software instrument track. If you want to record your voice or an instrument with a microphone, whether that's a USB microphone, or an XLR microphone and an audio interface, open the audio track with the microphone image. If you want to hook up an electric guitar or bass guitar to GarageBand using an audio interface, select the audio track with the guitar image. If you want to start with a drum or percussion beat using GarageBand's excellent virtual session players, choose the drummer track. And if you just want to jump in and access GarageBand's huge number of loops, any of these track types will open up the project. Picking any of these track types will open up the project and give you access to the workspace and the loop browser. So just go ahead and choose any of them. Speaking of loops, GarageBand comes with a huge library of royalty-free audio samples MIDI patterns and drummer grooves that you can use in your projects. There's a built-in loop browser that you can use to search for your loops using filters like genre types, instruments, and even the key that the loop is in. Click on the loop icon in the top right of GarageBand's screen to open the loop browser. You can use the loop browser's filtering capabilities to single out a particular instrument or genre, from here, you can choose a category and preview individual loops by simply clicking them. When you've found a sample that you like, click and drag it across to the other side of the GarageBand window. It's helpfully signposted drag Apple loops here. A track will be automatically created for your loop, a software instrument track, real instrument track, or drummer track, depending on the type of loop you've chosen. You can then play the loop in your project by hitting the spacebar. Bonus tip here, you may notice a tick tick noise when you play back your project. That's the metronome. It's on by default and it's a good tool for keeping in time, especially when recording instruments without a drum loop or drummer track accompaniment. You can turn it off if you want by clicking the metronome button at the top of the screen. On the left of the GarageBand window is the library. Depending on the track type you have selected, this is where you'll find instrument sounds that you can play in a software instrument track
voice, guitar and bass presets for audio tracks. And choose from the available session drummers and the different drum kits that they can play. Whatever track type you're using, select it, click the library icon in the top left of the screen and use the menu system to select the instrument, effect preset or drummer that you want. You'll probably notice that some of these instruments, effect presets and maybe even some of the loops that we looked at earlier were greyed out. You can easily gain access to these by When you first download GarageBand on Mac, you only get a fraction of its full sound library with the initial installation. As I mentioned, you may notice in the loop browser or library that some sounds or presets are greyed out with a wee download arrow next to them. You can download these one by one if you really want to, but if you want access to all of the content that GarageBand has to offer, here's how to get it. Head to GarageBand in the toolbar, Hover your cursor over Sound Library and select Download All Available Sounds. Be warned, however, that this is a sizable download, so maybe set this off overnight or before you go to work or something like that. You can check the progress of your download by clicking the small progress bar that's found underneath the LCD in the top of the GarageBand window. While you're waiting for all that to download, watch this playlist, where I've got even more tutorial videos aimed at GarageBand beginners on Mac.